This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Welcome again to Journeys, Chronicles of our Asian Century, and this is for the uh, week of uh, September 25 to October 1st. I'll report to you about the people and places, about uh, news and developments in our region, and of course our focus on Philippines and China. We have our guest uh, who will observe through this, and then uh, we will have a discussion. Uh, the Executive Director of the Association of Philippine-China Understanding, the Four. oldest Philippine uh, uh, organization relating to China and the people-to-people -people relationship with China. This is, of course, uh, Pete Arce, and uh, we will have a Morning. lengthy discussion with uh, Pete uh, uh, in a while. Now, let's, uh, let's look at the many thousands of activities of Filipinos in China and vice versa uh, that has happened this week. We will first report to you uh, the, uh, another Filipino entrepreneur in China, uh, Mr. Roger O.G. Esguera and his uh, culinary uh, activities there. Today, we feature uh, O.G. who successfully established a um, business in China. Uh, Roger O.G. Esguera, the founder of O.G.'s Choice Longoniza, is a Filipino businessman based in Tianjin. He first got the business idea when her Chinese wife, Lily, and their child took a liking to the famous Filipino food product. Upon sharing a photo of his homemade longaniza on his social media page, jokingly offering them the Filipino sausages, he did not expect a positive response. He soon received the first order for his longaniza from Suzhou. It did not take long for the word to get around, especially among homesick Filipinos craving for the Filipino, uh, very popular Filipino viand. OG credits the success of his newly founded or newly found food product partly to social media. Tianjin TV took notice of him and his product after he created an official account on WeChat. Uh, WeChat, of course, is the very popular social uh, media there. Uh, they were invited to share the process of making his famous longaniza on TV and to be uh, participating uh, in one of his programs, or of its programs, quote, <coughs> Challenge Wei Zui Zi, uh, unquote, where Roger and Lily placed second place. At present, uh, OG's choice longaniza sells four variants of longaniza in Tianjin. He also made sure to consider the Chinese market with the spicy longoniza recipe. Other Filipino food products such as embotido, daing na bangos, and bagoong are also sold under his brand. Of course, we thank uh, the China Radio International and uh, Ms. Michelle, Adige, uh, Michelle Adige and, uh, and uh, Ms. Jade Sian uh, of China Radio International for these uh, uh, reports on uh, Filipinos and their activities in China. And uh, next, of course, uh, is Team Pilipinas that will be joining the 2017 Belt and Road Tennis Cup. This coming October 6, the uh, 2017 Belt and Road Tennis Cup will be held in Beijing Tennis Administration <coughs> Center. The aim of the event is to promote the Belt and Road Initiative through sports and cooperation between uh, countries. It is organized by the Beijing Tennis Association and Silk Road Cities Alliance. Team Pilipinas will be participating in the said tourney 
Joining them is one of the sports events active organizers, Senior Superintendent Neil Alisangan, an attaché of the Philippine National Police, Juvan Divinigracia, who has been working as professional tennis coach in Agta or the Academy of Haidan Foreign Language School in, uh, in Beijing for five years. He will also be present. And uh, after this uh, tennis uh, report, uh, activity from the uh, Philippine Embassy in Beijing. The Philippine Embassy in Beijing holds lectures on air pollution, health and wellness. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, we thank the Embassy of the Philippines in China for this report. The Philippine Embassy successfully organized a lecture on China's pollution and how it affects the environment on uh, April 6 of 2017 at the Centro Rizal, which was attended by 40 participants from the embassy and the Filipino community. The topic was very relevant as China's air pollution becomes extremely high, causing harm to humans as well as the environment. In his opening remarks, Philippine Ambassador Jose Santiago Santa Ramana, or Chito for short, emphasized the importance of being conscious of one's health and wellness despite the busy work environment. The resource speaker, Dr. Juan Paulo Velocilio from the Philippines, who practices in the fields of wellness and integrative medicine, cancer prevention, integrated fitness and nutrition, anti-aging and weight management, presented some facts about China's pollution and its harmful effects on individuals and the environment. Dr. Velocilio also shared possible solutions that may be done to minimize the effects of pollution through natural remedies, technologies, nutrition, and exercise. He further provided tips on detoxification and discussed the health benefits of specific vegetables and beverages that act as natural detoxifiers. The attendees had the opportunity to raise questions and concerns related to health and nutrition during the open forum. Uh, so our uh, embassy in Beijing is very active and of course we know the uh, Beijing government has been taking uh, very uh, uh, serious steps in uh, curbing pollution in Beijing. The activity concluded with a simple salu salu wherein participants exchanged insights and ideas on eating healthy and staying fit. And uh, in the past uh, episode we had an interview with the uh, personalities uh, that organized and led the Philippine uh, kids team, Quezon City-based uh, uh, kids, uh, to China to join in the Ch uh, Gothia China football uh, competitions. You know? And uh, we then subsequently had an interview with Jeff Wu, the um, Gothia China uh, tournament uh, organizer, which is a full-time job for him, and attorney Yayi Do uh, Duque. Uh, with the inspiration uh, behind the Philippine team. And so uh, uh, let's go on with the um, uh, uh, script we have. Uh, the Philippine Quezon uh, City Youth League's participation in the Gothia China International Competition and interview uh, some of its organizing personalities such as Kagawa J.R. Ubales of Quezon City and Coach Ronaldo Patulin of the Sports NGO LAOS last episode. Uh, subsequently, we interviewed the driving force behind the Philippine Gothia uh, football efforts, attorney Yayi Duque and uh, Gothia China's young dynamic tournament director, Dr. or Mr. Jeff uh, Wu, who had to leave for Malaysia before our regular taping here in the studio. So we taped this previously in uh, Mama Rosa, a restaurant in, at, Capitol, uh, at uh, Capitolio. And here's the preview of the interview, which you will watch next week in this segment of ours. Okay, let's... Yeah, I started as a player and ended up uh, helping kids develop. So we're having this program, meaning the Laos Football Club is having a program for the youth. And included therein is the program that lets kids from Quezon City go to Gothia Cup. And so... We, we started this with a communication to uh, Shenyang because apparently Quezon City is the sister city of Shenyang. So it started from there. Then uh, um, Rodolfo, the, the one in charge of Quezon City, was able to get in touch with uh, Jeff here. And that started it all. And it was a difficult 
um, preparation because it's new, like we have to go to the Chinese embassy for the visas and we have to go to DSWD for the permits of the kids. So it was um, a roller coaster ride for us because it, it was new, but uh, we were able to get there and play. And we thank Jeff for uh, inviting us and also for coming to the Philippines to follow through with our program. Okay, uh, do we have a segment uh, with uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Jeff Wu? Okay, let's uh, roll it too. Hi, I'm the Chairman Director uh, of Costa Cup China. I'm mainly responsible for uh, the in overseas marketing. Uh, and also, it, during the tournament, I'm responsible for the logistics around the fields, the match schedule, the referee, the fixture, right? Uh, Gothic Cup China is the biggest, the most international, one of the most influential youth tournament in Asia. Uh, this year we have uh, 300, uh, 300, uh, three, uh, 300 teams from all over the world. Uh, roughly we have 31 nations and regions. And how we started with uh, Kuizong is, it starts from email. Yeah. Yeah, Rodolfo just emailed me and he told me that Kuizong, right, is the sister city with Shenyang. And he want to have the team from Kuizong to China. I said, wow, that's what we want too. So through football, this two city is bonding. And f with football, start from kids, right? Mm, that's right? Then we have, how to say, when they grow up, I hope the kids from Kuizong will have a good feeling about China and also I want them to feel that this is their second home in China they have family in China and I hope this relationship will keep going on